someone that you've known someone for so long, you want them to have no excuse. And here we go! And the bell needs to be run right here. And oh my goodness! Jamie Jameson greeting the man dive and big drop kick by the Hossman. Here comes, J oh wait, and Manda getting out of harm's way, and Elijah Dean uh, pretty much getting uh, his plan, biting him right in the keister, and oh, Jamie Jamison's just gonna take the fight outside with him, but then again, that is pretty much a walk in the park when it comes to the country hammer. Oh my goodness, and oh, another right. Delivering the goods is the country hammer. He is one of the top picks here to win this tournament in 2PW. Have you looked at the bracket? I have looked at the bracket. Mm -hmm. Big road, big road ahead of it's them. It's a big road ahead of them, but whoever wins this has a good shot. Well, real quick, we have good shots. That was our first plate of chops served here tonight at Gold Rush Prospect Pro Wrestling. You can't get away from it, can I? No, you can't. The only concern that I have with the man down coming in here, other than the talent, is the beating that he took at the end of last week, or last month's show. He took an absolute beating by the whole locker. But by the looks of it right now, it's not really affecting him. I mean, he's sticking in there with Jamie Jameson. It's just like a game of chess with you two. Like you said, these guys have known each other since the ninth grade. And, oh, he was going for the makeover early, but he misses it. Country Hander Sims about to run, picks him up, swings him around where he lands, nobody knows, but he's down. One, two, and no. The rotation Jamie Jameson had for that move was phenomenal. Complete other rotation. That disorients your body and takes your body completely out of its natural habitat, which is two feet on the ground. Well, right now, the so-called Tom Brady of professional wrestling is quite in trouble right now at the top rope. What does Jamie Jameson have up his sleeve? Just like Tom Brady, the man dime will go away. Okay. Hold on one second. This is a very precarious position. They're on the second row. Looks like he's going for a super park off the top row. But right now, he is in trouble. And the man dime actually it it put a little teeth in there. It looked like a bite. It looked like, hey, like I said before, one thing about man dime, I'll give him credit. He kicks, claws, bites, whatever he has to do to get to the top. And here, oh. The people here aren't worth seeing that. They're not worth to see that. He can do it in different way. The absolute cockiness to pull that move off is disturbing. And I kind of like it. I'll be honest. I kind of like it. And now, Mandyne trying to gain some momentum back here from Jameson. And he's taking it. Look at it. Thrusting that shoulder into the solar plexus and taking the wind out of Jamie Jameson. He literally took the words right out of my mouth. He's, he's making the bigger man, chopping him down, and making it hard for him to breathe. And right now, back and forth they go. If you see shot for shot, but the man dime catching him with that big knee lift, and now just applying that pressure. Got that arm cinched right under the chin of the country hammer and is now squeezing, squeezing the life out of this local favorite, as I have to say here in Worthington, Pennsylvania. They love him here, but is it enough to take take down the man dime? He's an international favorite. Get it right, Tom. Well, I don't know if he's international, but that's a big boot he just gave him. Oh, wait a minute. And this is the pose of as well. Power slam! Good Lord! And the man dime. Big sent on two in. Oh my goodness. The man dime almost declares here. Did you see the combination? How quick those moves were? How lethal. I'm, not, I'm noticing that man dime right now is stepping on the back of Jamie Jameson's neck. It seems to be that he's starting to get a little bit frustrated with Jamie not, not going down as easily as he wanted him to. But one thing I can say is the man dime, no, uh, no stranger to the rule breakers handbook. We've seen it numerous times. I wouldn't call it rule breaking. I think it's a good lawyer finds a loophole and you know executes for the win. Well, speaking of executing, he is not doing that right now, and he is giving this uh, pretty much the if I say the captain of the Hossman time to breathe. Jameson up and over. Mandime, oh, he just caught him in midair. Jameson caught him in midair. Mandime, though, fighting back, delivering those elbows. Smart veteran maneuver by Dean to it. Oh, did you see he's grabbing that back pocket? No of way, no way. Ooh, super kick to the face. I thought that was a three, to be honest. The, the super kick was a three? The super kick was a three? Doc interrupted me before I got to say it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then, okay, back and forth we go. Oh, catches him with that forearm. Juicy caught both legs of Dean and now a clothesline. And the country hammer going off, delivering the goods. Has him 
Man dimes up, lands it right on the back of his head. Elijah Dean doesn't know where he's at right now. Doesn't know the counter, why this watch. This could be the moment we need, the moment that the Country Hammer needs to take out Elijah Dean in this first round of our Gold Rush tournament here. Now there's two things that Jim Jameson feeds on. That's the fan support and whiskey. Let's see how this goes. He had the choke slam and the man dime scratching again, clawing like we talked about. The eyes. Oh, he has it. Is he going up over? Oh, he caught him. German suplex. Oh, Jeez. wait a minute. Jameson got up. Jameson got up. Again, this is the makeover. Did you see Dean flip on that? My God. Man dimes now two nickels. Has him up. Lands him. One, two, country hammer. Oh, he's not going to the next round just yet. Elijah Dean kicking out. What an impressive kick out by the man dime. Well, it's appropriate that he's called the man dime because he flipped like a coin, and that was 50-50 whether he was going to win or lose that match right there. Unreal. <laughs> Go ahead. Ty, you have something to say? It's not looking good for my top pick of the bracket, but it's going to be a Cinderella story. Oh, he kicked that middle rope, though, right in the Jonas Brothers. Good Lord. Has him. Drops him. Rolls him up. The unprettier. One, two, and no. Oh, another close count. Another close count. It was a close count, and Elijah Dean was a millisecond away of pretty much advancing in this tournament. Both of these individuals, like you said before, known each other since the ninth grade, um, grew up wanting, wanting a career in professional wrestling, and look where they're at right now. Did you see them nose to nose there, just start cussing at each other, and now just right after right, both of them punching each other. Jameson now, the couple repeats, but the man died putting a stop to that quick. Off the top, or off the rips he goes, up, catches him, drops him, one. Oh, rolls him. Elijah rolling out of that. Very smart maneuver. Choke slam, and the country right. hammer has him. One, two, and no. Man, die kicking out again. Jamie Jameson is pulling out all the stops. The height on that choke slam. He basically tried to plug the hole in the Working King Arena roof with the man die. And right now, the man die. The man die's down, guys. He's not moving. I mean. Oh, he got I know, I'm just saying, Country Hammer needs to capitalize. Oh, wow. No love he loss here. Awesome. He just spit in the face of the Country Hammer, and we know how many women Elijah Dean's been with. You know how many STDs that is? Uh, just saying, you know. It's how much it's alive. Doc, as somebody that goes clubbing with the man dime, I can tell you that he's, he's safe. I would not brag about that, but I would also tell Jamie Jameson to not use this chair. He uses this chair and he's out of the tournament. That's it. Mandime wants this. Mandime is smart. Wait, catches him. Face breaker. This could be it. One, two, no. Jamie Jameson. Only a two Jamie Jameson needs to refocus. He is making too many little mistakes. He keeps giving the man dime an opening over and over again. He needs to calm down. But wait a minute now. Dean was going to use that chair. I mean, Country Hammer has it. He doesn't have all of it. He has enough. I think we're going to see it. Can we see it? Wait, wait. Rose up. One, two, three. Wait, wait. Wait, he was tapping. Man Dime wins! Man no. Dime wins! Man no. Dime was tapping though. No, Man Dime was definitely tapping. No. Oh my God. Why do you even doubt me? Hey guys, here in the studio we have a returning guest. We always like to we like to do, we did this with Delilah Doom the last for about three years in a row here. Uh, we 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 like to get them while they're young. That sounds weird and dirty, <laughs> but uh, uh, we had a year ago uh, this uh, wonderful lady on uh, probably, probably about a match into her career, and she has done so much in her rookie year. 
Um, I can't imagine somebody coming out of Pittsburgh that's had a better one. Britt Baker back in the studio. <laughs> okay. And among the things, uh, I actually gave you a good camera shot this time. <laughs> oh, good, good. I don't know if you ever looked at your interview before, but you're, I don't know. I was tired that night. And I had a lot going on. Your shot was like all kinds of crooked <laughs> and stuff. You're forgiven. It's okay. It was all you. <laughs> but, uh, but welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, like I said, it, it, it's been a year since uh since uh, you debuted in the IWC uh, I think well well longer than that since you were you were the backstage announcer I was for a the bit. I was the interviewer You're the interviewer oh, for God, a bit That seemed so long ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah I was I was backstage interviewer they got jumped by Ray Lynn <laughs> And now she's out the door so so let's see how that worked out Yeah right bye <laughs> I hope she's watching. Bye. That's awesome. Uh, but anyways, so like I said, you, you let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Again, of course, IWC is your home promotion. You came right. up, you you trained with them and everything, um, and you've had a, 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 a you know a, a lot of great matches with that. I've I've seen you and Raylan even on uh, Global Force, uh, of yes. course, and and going around for that. Can you talk about your experience? Um, one working with Raylan for so long. Mm -hmm. um and uh and kind of working around iwc and and really kind of being the cornerstone of the women's division that there was none for the longest time you're right there wasn't any but um, as far as ray lynn goes it's to the point now when like when we are talking matches and stuff we have our own lingo we'll be like the thing and then the thing and then yeah yeah, yeah that okay and it's 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 hilarious because when we when i first met her i was terrible I, I had my first match i think i did what two moves in that tag match total and i was blown up even walking to the ring i was shaking nervous i was like i forget everything they're like right you have two moves shut up and they're 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 talking to me the whole time cj's talking to me the whole time it was absolutely terrified and now and then like what a year later Raylan and I were wrestling in Global Force, putting together like actually kind of decent matches. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I think I, I'm. I feel like I was lucky to kind of have someone that I could keep, you know, traveling with, having matches with. Because we we did some like smaller shows on the road too. She was she took me with her, and it was good to get some reps in. Someone I was comfortable with, someone I knew was safe, wasn't gonna drop me on my head, wasn't gonna drop her in her head. Because she's a, she was fairly experienced going in. I know she I think trained down in OVW. I think when we talked with her. So so she. Right, yeah, she she did OVW, and then um, just recently too, she went. She trained uh, tr the House of Truth, and broke her hand. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> thanks a lot, Truth Martini. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, so she's no, she's back in action now. She's she's recovered, on her way to California mm -hmm. to live with Dylan happily ever after. <laughs> and now she gets to do the Lex Luger uh, steal. In the oh, I thing. know, right? You know, uh, that, that that was a great one. That was a great one when, when they pulled that up. I'm like, it's Lex Luger. What? I know she's the narcissist. What's going on? <laughs> and they put her X-ray up on the on the screen. It, it's like, what is this? <laughs> That's a plumber move. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so uh, from that, you say you've been around a bit, and uh, uh, I, I was surprised. One, I was, I was happy to see you were on the poster when I, I go out to my, my yearly sabbatical to the Gathering of the Juggalos. Um, and uh, you were part of the Girl Fight show out there. Uh, tell me, because I know, I think we were messaging a little bit on Facebook because you were, you were like trying to figure out where to go and everything like that. Okay, so. And, and, and the, ga the Gathering <laughs> is, the ga the gathering no, is that, an that's experience. What, that's what I'm going to say yeah. here. So. <laughs> I I I had an idea what the gathering of the jugglers was. Mm -hmm. I would say I was highly underinformed though before I got there. I um you know great people. Great. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would go alone next time. <laughs> Not <laughs> just because I so like I get there and I pull up in this field and they're like you can park here 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 or here. You might get blocked in and be stuck here for like 48 hours but you might not and i'm like okay great and you, and you had iwc and I, had, I had to get, leave immediately after the match because there was a battle royal at the end i couldn't even stay for that i had to leave immediately and go to iwc and shower because it was eight million degrees outside that it was an outside show yeah, it was rough but um they gave away free hot dogs during that i don't know like i i, I don't know i think because they had their big show at like midnight the night before Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this was at Which like went to like what three a.m. Yeah, it went to like three a.m. Yeah. Um, thankfully, not as late as the year that that the main event uh, of Tommy Dreamer was when the sun came up a, a couple years before. Uh, so I think they were just like, yeah, we'll have free food, and they're giving everybody hot dogs out there. Yeah. <laughs> 
they oh. uh, they wheeled a, a giant like industrial fan in the back like in the tent where the, the locker room was and it mm-hmm. was it was like the best thing in the world because this fan we all just stood there in front of this fan because it, it was so hot that was brutal but it was fun it was a good time right it was it was an experience mm-hmm. i would definitely say awesome um and also also you know that's it's a it's a rough fan base you know to be right. in front of right and and i i was always worried because they always label like it, it, this is the first year they did it under the girl fight banner mm-hmm. they always label it as like the exotic women of wrestling and stuff yeah. and i'm like in the first year i saw that on the program i'm like they're completely just gonna have a bunch of strippers come out here right and do stuff in the ring and i was so happy to see it was like crazy mary dobson right and, and, which you know, i love her people like that I, wasn't that the one that you posted a couple weeks ago that said hey attention dream match coming up well, um i might have i i've been having a lot of dream matches lately actually within the past like probably two months mm-hmm. i had you know, candace Soray with um crazy mary allison k or sienna so I, those dream matches have just been rolling in left and right so i've been been super lucky and fortunate but um it, as far as oh girl fight over at the uh gathering of the juggalos yeah i was scared because people were telling me there's these stories they're like oh they're gonna hate you they're mm-hmm. like you're not weird enough they're gonna throw batteries at <laughs> you're you. not weird and enough I'm like, what do you mean they're gonna throw batteries at me like why and they're like because you're just not weird and i was like why i want to be weird what do i do i don't want these batteries coming at me <laughs> um it was fine though the, the crowd was fun mm-hmm. it was just so hot mm-hmm. and that's all i remember is it was hot and but you know it was fun. It was a good time. Like I said, good experience. Let's th- let's talk a little bit more about the, uh, these interesting moments because it feels like um, oh. every every weekend I end up seeing something on on, on an Instagram or, or or some promotion site of uh, you mentioned Allison K. Who I believe you had a beer with during. The oh, match. Yeah. <laughs> we went we went way rogue that match. So we probably brawled outside the ring for like I don't what seemed like ten minutes, but I'm sure it wasn't. But. Um, she, so she is so fun and so witty and so creative and i love her that was one of my favorite people to work with ever she we go over to the concession stand and she grabs two beers she's like we need a break so we're sitting in these chairs we take it we take a drink then we're exchanging shots back and forth again take another drink um yeah pedro got i think pedro ended up bleeding that match what yeah I, he, he was, hey, for those who don't know pedro's the announcer pedro is the announcer yeah. he's he's the best announcer in the world i love pedro but um pedro got involved he started bleeding and then at the end you know she she gave a little you know a little uh put put me over speech to Britt baker and then hit me with a stunner i took the stunner but i didn't spill my beer so you know <laughs> priorities that was that was a really fun match. That was at um that was girls the last girls night out show, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, with AIW. Awesome. Uh, uh from that and, and and so speaking of AIW, um this picture came up just today, and I was like I have to ask about this one. Uh, if I find the right button, this guy right here. <laughs> so those don't know. Like, okay, set this up for our audio <laughs> listeners. Uh, oh, I didn't even know Sanjay Dutt in the background. I know. Look at another. <laughs> So, um, this is, this is Swoggle, Hornswoggle, four minutes Hornswoggle with WWE. And, um, one of my fav personal favorite workers in the back is, uh, Dick Justice. I mm-hmm. love him. I think he's absolutely hilarious. I think he's money. Um, so what was happening here is this was mid match with Swoggle versus Tracy Smothers. So they were wrestling, but then, you know, this obviously led to a dance off because why not? Because we're at AIW and there's Tracy Smothers wrestling a midget with Dick Justice as the ref. So why wouldn't we have a dance off? Because then, you that's, know, that's how they do. Right. That's how they do in Cleveland. And and he just sw- I was outside the ring. We're outside the ring banging on the on the mat, you know, and then Swaggle was like, get in the ring with me. And I'm like, OK. And he's, he's like, we go to the one corner. And he's like, spin me. I spin him. We go to the other corner. He's like, dip me. And I'm like, OK, man, the, you're you got it. <laughs> so you're calling dance moves like you're calling a wrestling match. No, I, he was. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, that was an experience. And that, that picture came up and I, I laughed so hard because that is just, uh, everything AIW is in that. All you need to add to that picture is like Space Monkey, Super Kicking, <laughs> like Ray Row or something. And, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> and then that picture's complete. Trey, Trey's telling me that that match stole the show at Girls' Night Out. Oh, <laughs> thank you. By the way um so we have a couple people checking out so please if you have any questions uh while we're rolling here uh please let us know we are keeping an eye out on the uh facebook uh live here 
uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. But um, awesome. So at the get-to, again, that weekend of the gathering was interesting because it seemed like you were everywhere. Of course, you were at the gathering. You at IWC that night, which was, what was that night? That was Wipeout, I think. I don't I think, remember. I think that was it Wipeout. It was something, yeah. It was, the, it was the one I didn't make. Um, I guess there's been a lot of those lately. But, uh, but then I, I, I go, I get back, and I'm, going, I'm in my nosebleeds at Raw, as I do, because that's what I do at Raw. Um, and uh, and, and this Nia Jax has her first match on Raw. And I'm watching, and I'm like, wait a minute. Somebody seems familiar down there, a mile away, down there in the ring. <laughs> and if it wasn't for the fact that I saw, like, your gear, like, just two days before. It was new. I wouldn't yeah. have known. Yeah, because it was new gear. Yep. I wouldn't have known that it was you. Mm -hmm. And they definitely couldn't give you a different name because <laughs> well, it was on your tights. I know, and I had other gear, too. And they are like, nope, wear that gear. And I was like, okay, fine. But, um, yeah, talk about, uh, holy shit moment i that was um are we allowed to swear we're not allowed yeah, to swear you're allowed to i will try not to swear we'll keep, we're, we're baby faces here sorry if we don't swear okay. <laughs> um yeah that was a an experience and a half so just kind of walk you through that day so i had got we got an email probably what two weeks beforehand asking about extra work and typically especially with girls on extra work with WWE, you don't really get used you're kind of there for a maybe if they need like a guest spot like a hairstylist yeah. or something like most most yeah. you see is like when the it's like guys rosebuds, doing security right? spots too yeah, yeah. And, the, and the rosebuds is they got killed off so it's totally done so they actually stopped using girls as extras for a while it's like the guys still do the security spots but girls kind of got they were done and then so i got that email and i was like okay um i thought it was weird that this time when they asked they're like oh by the way you have to get like this physical done and this blood work done and i thought that was weird and i was like oh you know probably just a new protocol or mm -hmm. something and we get uh, so we get there and i'm and raylan's there too and they're like oh you're gonna have you're probably gonna have a match tonight and i'm like i'm thinking like me and her like what like a like a practice match before cameras were on we didn't really think anything of it and then um, a couple of the refs are, are like, oh, you're excited, like, get my beat down. I'm like, what is everyone talking about? And then finally, they're like, yeah, Nia Jax is going to debut tonight. We're going to use you. You're going to wrestle Nia. And I'm like, what? So at first, I'm like, oh, maybe maybe she needs to practice moves. Or maybe it's like a dark match or something. And then they're like, nope, match two, segment six, Brit, Brit versus Nia. And I'm like. All right, bring in the swerved cameras. Like, what's happening here? Like, there's no way that I am going to wrestle Nia Jax on Monday Night Raw. And sure enough, the, she, in walks Nia. Hey, nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, I I was shitting my pants. I was so nervous, <laughs> for lack of better words. I was like, because oh, this is her debut. Like, right. Force of nature, and she, she was she has hadn't been on NXT long. No, like she's I mean she's done takeover matches and everything for the title and everything, right. but still like she was it was it was kind of surprising she went up because she was she's only been around for like six months or so, right? Right. But, yeah, and um, she I mean the the this was the I think the Monday right after the brand split, so this is like if she, this she's making her first ever Raw match, her Raw debut. So the, you know that's a little that's some pressure mm -hmm. right there, but um. And, and you're also the other women's match on the same night that I think Sasha won the belt from Charlotte. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we're I got also I got to watch that backstage, which was awesome. Which you know she's doing all these crazy dives, making everyone backstage hold their breath. You know, um, who was backstage? They were, they were all all the and all the workers like it's so awesome because they all sit and watch everyone's matches, which I think is so cool, and it's. They're like, like gasping and, and popping for moves left and right too, and it's mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to see everybody still. So it's just like those backstage scenes from Total Divas. Where's... Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> like you see, you've seen them on there, right? Where it's like all the girls are, are gathered around watching the matches. Right. Yeah. And it's like that, but like yeah. a ton more. Yeah. So guys are watching, girls are watching, and girls are stealing the show. <laughs> No, Absolutely but, that. No, night. the Sasha, Sasha, Charlotte, Becky, and all those girls, phenomenal. I mm -hmm. think they're still in shows every night still. So certainly. So uh, so so you got the first, and again, it's been amazing because first we saw you, and then we saw uh, the Light of Doom just a couple weeks later, 
who mm-hmm. was the, you know, like we just talked about at the top of the show. And, and, and again, like otherwise I know Eamon's known a couple of the other girls that have been in there too. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, kind of an interesting trend and i know it's exciting for everybody that watches indies because we're like i know that person i know mm-hmm. that person i've seen that person you know mm-hmm. and 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 then there's that weird uh jameson guy with the weird jaw that they keep using and almost got a main event on he Smackdown. was he <laughs> was um at, he was at james ellsworth ellsworth yeah 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 he, it was the, on raw with you as yep, well with braun braun Strowman. man mm-hmm. i thought he was done i thought that was the end <laughs> that's the end of james ellsworth but yeah they he's you know he's a character so Mm-hmm. They'll, keep, they'll keep using them, I think. So I, I gotta ask, uh, when 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 you get a spot like that, and I don't know, you were probably just too blown away at the time, but like, are you kind of like wondering, like, am I the next Colin Delaney? It crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. I'd be lying if I didn't. I love Colin. I just saw him this past weekend. Actually, he's always at AW. But um, it, yeah, but no, I don't. I didn't really know what to think because, like I said, they don't like they don't have women's squash matches typically, or like women jobbers so it i it would the whole experience was just kind of weird and unusual and i didn't really know what to expect or what was gonna happen what was gonna come next or how people were gonna react and but my phone was blowing up by the end of the night i will say <laughs> that so <laughs> um from there uh, of course and, and i know you know that 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 picture's been going around uh of you sitting there in the ring uh and that that that's awesome but uh you also popped up a couple weeks ago in ring of honor here mm-hmm. in pittsburgh uh in the and the uh women of, women of honor uh six girl tag at the beginning right um so is that your your first experience with them yep yeah they um asked me to do the show it was re- recently like that just that same week mm-hmm. and it was i was with kelly klein and veda i'm a big veda veda scott fan i love her against it was mandy faye who's a she's training at the dojo and faye and um who else was oh crazy mary so yeah it was fun six man to get a little crazy mm-hmm. but it was it was a it was a good experience That's awesome so so i again you've been around a bit um other than raw uh, what's kind of been the craziest thing that you've experienced in your first uh year of of uh of, of being in the indies crazy um i just think the opportunities that i've had i mean aiw they spoil me rotten over there with just the matches the opponents the opportunities oh actually the jt lightning invitation tournament so like picture i walk in the locker room to the likes of you know billy gunn kurt hawkins or not kurt, what's his um brian myers mm-hmm. uh you know now, Swa- now, now kurt hawkins now again, kurt hawkins apparently. again yeah um you know, Ray Rowe, Cedric Alexander, and then I, and then there's me, and I'm like, I have no business being here, uh, but it was, it was awesome, it was, even just to watch those matches the whole weekend was so, it was amazing, it's an incredible environment to be around, you know, the fans were insane, so that, I think that was, just being a part of that whole, the, the tournament, the experience in general, and also we just had Johnny Gargano's farewell match, which that like hits uh, hits hard, but that was also something really cool to be a part of. We'll miss you, Johnny Bananas, in your flag tights in IWC. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, he's great. He's he's awesome, and they're out there training tonight too. And I miss them. I wish I was with them. Today's Candace's birthday too, so everyone go tweet Candace happy birthday. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't be putting this out there. Uh, in, in, on Give the her a night, belated birthday. Whenever this comes out, you know, just just look it up. Be like, so I just heard it was your birthday. Yeah, going to get so confused. Um, <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, from there. So, what are you watching these days? What are you watching to uh, to, to kind of keep up with things? What's kind of got your attention to, anymore? So, as far as watching, I I've recently have been watching, kind of keeping up with. If I know I'm going to be wrestling so and so on the weekend, kind of find some matches of that person. Mm-hmm. But as far as keeping up with like NXT and Raw and SmackDown, it's hard now. I mean, I, and I'll be totally honest. I never used to watch SmackDown as much, and now I I, I want to watch it. But it's it's I feel I never watch it live because I'm I usually train. So I'm either in Pittsburgh or Cleveland training. So watching things live doesn't really happen very often. But even catching up, I feel like there's just no time because then you're I'm catching up here, but getting behind on on this NXT show. So uh, I'm I'm still watching everything. It's just behind. I'm mm-hmm. never not not really you know I got to check Twitter to see who has the belts first before I can actually see it myself oh yeah it's, it's getting tough for all 
just the it's stuff for us that aren't trying to train (laughs) yeah so uh but and such good stuff now too they saw all across the board right it's it there's good wrestling everywhere it's not hard you just have to turn on the tv we talked about a lot of great things um but you know we'll go with the standby question here we like to end this with what is the worst and best thing the best and worst thing about uh about indie wrestling Man, that's hard. The best thing, I think, just getting getting to know people and then seeing those people kind of progress. Um, so like John, like Johnny, I I I like my heart. I get happy so hard when I think of uh, Candace and Johnny. I just get so happy because they're awesome people, awesome trainers. I can't say enough good things about them. Like Johnny, you know, his farewell match and everything. That's just something. It's it's not my match. I have nothing to do with it, but it just makes you so happy because you get to know them. Because it's like indie wrestling, we're all a big happy family. And mm-hmm. and um, Cedric Alexander being on the cruiserweight mm-hmm. classic thing. Now that's I mean it's sad because it's like oh we'll never see you in the locker room again. But hey, congrats. But then as far as the worst thing about indie wrestling, I don't know. The The road trips obviously suck, but as long as you're in good company, then I actually the road trips east suck. I don't mind going west, like driving to Cleveland's fine. But as soon as you go to Philly, Jersey, that side, that half of the turnpike is just junk i hate it's so boring. you don't want to cross that border no because it's so there's nothing over there and yeah. it's like you every time you hit a service plaza you're like yes <laughs> that seems about right uh, uh western new york is kind of tough I, I i i've discovered um i well i most i think the last time i went, headed that way was over for the monster factory mm-hmm. um like rochester don't it's tough up there. oh no <laughs> i don't believe in that no i'm just kidding um and we were it was me LaRusso and Darren De Niro and we're driving to the Monster Factory and on the way home and I'm gonna put him on blast right now because this is so unsafe we are driving home and I'm asleep LaRusso's asleep Darren's driving and we wake up and he's live tweeting saying hey bored on this drive home like he'd tweet at me and I wake up and go I cut a heel promo on him like you are not gonna kill us in this car put your phone down which but so that just tells you a little bit how the road trips go but you sometimes they're really fun sometimes they get stressful like that but I know any road trip is better that Roman Reigns is scaring me so much I keep looking at him <laughs> it's, just, it's just Roman Reigns over my over my shoulder here it's just it's just Roman Reigns can we no we need to break can I come get him can we, what I've been staring at this whole time. She just, she just, she just took Roman Reigns. No. Uh, I was gonna say, get, get, you know, just get over by the mic. Huh? <laughs> so yep, here's there we what, go. I've had to look at this whole podcast. Like this. <laughs> just, just staring at you, judging you. Apparently. <laughs> we're, we're gonna make sure we get a, a you with a picture with him. Uh, Me and afterwards, Roman. Just being buddies. He just stands there. He's just literally like right where the camera is. He's right there staring. <laughs> It's like those clowns. It's terrifying. So what is the best and scariest thing about being in the studio? Roman Reigns? Uh. <laughs> yeah, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the best and the worst thing about being in the studio. Right there. Uh, from the, the <laughs> Facebook Live, we did have a question. Okay. Right, we'll stand by, but uh, Ricky out there wants to ask, uh, what is your dream match? Ooh. We don't ask that question anymore, because I felt like that's like I what think, we... I see, I... I honest to God can say that I my dream match I just wrestled not too long ago because it was Candice LeRae um, for the for the fact that when I I didn't I wasn't really as a kid I didn't know what indie wrestling was it was kind of that was something I very recently got introduced to and when you Google indie wrestling female like Candice LeRae is it like she is the girl and you know she's she's I always tell people Candice LeRae is not only one of the best female wrestlers she's one of the best wrestlers period she's just kick ass and there's nothing she can do. She's, she's flawless to me. But, um, so a year later, here we are. And not only is Candace one of my trainers, but then I actually have to have a match with her. So that was, that was cool. But as far as dream match in the future, Hmm. I would say I would, I mean, you know, Sasha Banks would be any, any, any of the, the 
the you know women's revolution girls mm -hmm. but then um there's some girls still on the indies that i would love to have matches with like uh there's uh heidi lovelace i love her even veda i love veda too she's nuts and crazy and she can talk anybody into a hole because with on her mic skills are phenomenal i'd love to wrestle her just she's so fun um who else I would love to wrestle Andrew Palace because I love him. I just, I just love him. He's perfect, too. He's another flawless one. Hey, they, they have opened the door in IWC to intergender matches with you. They you, you have. Were, you were almost, reloaded. You were almost the IWC Tag Team Champion. I Hey, <laughs> don't, almost for now. I'm coming back for that. Hey, that sense. was fun. That was that. I, you know, that reloaded show. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. That was a good time. Because, um... Yeah, that was me. It was McCh me and McChesney versus the fraternity for the tag team titles. We almost, we almost won them. But I think in the future, and I'm, I hope Justin Plummer's listening. I encourage him to use some more intergender matches, just because it's fun, it's entertaining, mm -hmm. and you can get like really good matches out of it. as long as you don't insult the fans' intelligence. You can have really good intergender matches. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I've, I, I know. I mean. <laughs> just with Alex Daniels alone, I feel like so, it's so wait. Let's talk about Alex Daniels for a second. Just because at IWC, he is like this uber baby face. Mm -hmm. AIW, he is this psycho serial killer heel. So I always wondered about that because he comes out the very interesting music. Yeah, it's so scary. And and, the, and when I hear that song now, I get anxiety because when I was when I feuded or when I wrestled with him, it like that song. It would just make me so nervous because I was like, oh just like match nerves and yeah. now when i hear that song i associate that with and, being and like he, so terrified he came out in royal valley with with gone girl on his on his tights which yeah. is the yeah. movie about the guy that he killed his wore, wife yeah he he had and then they got people chanting gone girl for well, some he reason he had those tights the, the the first night of the jt lightning tournament when i wrestled him mm -hmm. he had the gone girl tights on i don't know why he still wears those i like figure it out but um yeah and that that was kind of my first taste of like one-on-one -on -one intergender wrestling and it's it's awesome. It was so fun. I had a great time with him. He's he's amazing worker. He's you know he's newer too, and he just beat Johnny Gargano in his mm -hmm. farewell match. And Johnny had nothing but good things to say about him in his farewell speech. Had a uh, tremendous match with Ray Rowe, I think, at that Wipeout yeah, show that in July. Yeah, that was awesome. He yeah. did. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was a really good match. Mm -hmm. Available at indiewrestling.us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Plug. All right. Uh, anything else you want to go out on? Well, where can people find you? What's coming up? I guess generally, what's coming up with you? Because we don't really know when we're releasing this right now. Um, things that are coming up. You know, I'm always at IWC, always at AIW. Uh, Remix Pro Wrestling for the first time coming up here. Um, other than that, oh, the 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 Rise, the Shimmer Rise seminar in chicago will be there when is that november 10th which apparently Tregar will be Tregar. out there for that so we'll see you there Tregar. he gets around he gets around on the indie shows oh wow. does he that's dirty no <laughs> just kidding no Tregar, we love Tregar. great guy but yeah other than that um you know things i know i'm booked i'm booked solid just kind of the same places around here cleveland pittsburgh chicago for a hot second <laughs> but other than that no I, I don't have anything else to say awesome uh at real brit baker on the twitter yes and instagram and facebook is it facebook facebook's sticky right now because i have too many friend requests i i gotta add them but it's like you facebook's weird because it only lets you have so many friends right which i'm against because well, why you, can you only have so you, many friends in life oh is this a this is a friend's page because you have a you have a separate thing right I don't, but people get creative and make their own things oh, for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be fan page time for you. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a fan page right now. So if there's one, it's not created by me. <laughs> but you can follow it. I'll follow it. I should go follow it too. Like, I've probably mistakenly tagged it several times in these posts. Oh, okay. So, no, that's fine. So hopefully, I got the right one on the Facebook tonight. This is you with the WWE ring, right? Where? I wouldn't uh, look at it. This one right here. I look right. Yeah, that's me. Okay, that's me. So look for uh, currently look for her with the uh, the picture of her in the WWE. Andrew ring. Palace just texted me and said he wants me to start doing spots on Sorg's show. <laughs> See, this is why I love him. This is why I want to wrestle him. Well, pull pull Ray Roman Reigns over. Yeah. And no, uh, here because I'm the baby face, so I 
I can't do a heel turn. Well, let's but, just pretend that he finally took made his heel turn. You know, no, we can't. No, we're baby faces here. No heel turns. But um, sorry, this is you have so much stuff in here. Have he him here. Some Scott Steiner. And Roddy Piper cup filled with candy canes. Because why wouldn't you have that? This, you know, this is a this is like an I spy book. This, this entire this entire podcast room is an I spy book. <laughs> Britt Baker, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And, and, and playing with our toys uh, here in the studio. Say bye to Roman Reigns, everybody. <laughs> 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 Sing, 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 you know how I act now When you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild, steady sipping chat now Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Well, hello, friends. I'm your pal in the mainstream media. And, and I'm the Riz. And, and you, you know, it. Riz, it takes years of strenuous, dedicated training before you're worthy to step inside a professional wrestling ring. But it takes even more time to develop complex, highly astute opinions about professional wrestling. Am I right? That is correct. Yes. And you know where we can find that? Yes. On the Wrestling Man. That's right. Knocking you completely out of your body and allowing you to have an outer body experience. So. That's right, he has the size, the strength, and, look at him, he's, he's and the lethal intent here tonight. Tony Johnson has the main event in his corner. Oh, but he might need more than that as that drop kick sends him reeling. And out of the ring he goes. Tony wants to get out as quick as he can, and he did exactly that. Yes, I, think, I think they're calling the audible right now. Tony Johnson didn't like the first play that was, uh, that was called. Well, you think that's funny? You think it's funny when, it, when a play doesn't come together? I think it's funny that uh, Tony Johnson's running away from the Reaper. Reaper is looking to take it back into the ring. Tony Johnson now slipping back in. Reaper, keep your eyes open. Oh, look at that. Reaper was ready for that. Slip back out of the ring and now there's Tony Johnson off the ropes. Down he goes and there are some shots. To See, that's there. all that he wants. That's all that Matt Connor wants, just to get his hands on Tony Johnson. This isn't about just getting a pin. This is about making him feel the pain, making him regret every decision that he had to join the main event. And now that's what we have. And you you have a simple ground and pound Matt Connor show. And you see, even with those gloves on, the, the just the strength behind that shot, Reaper shaking his head. Even with that protection on there. There's a rake of the chest. The, the velocity is with the shots are being delivered, all that emotion behind them. Add some extra punishment. Oh, look at the knees. You've got to hear the knees. The levers are increased. Strength wise, the deliverance of those maneuvers they have all that emotion behind them. It adds to it. As we said, it's personal. There's a grudge to be settled here. Whether it will be settled tonight, that's another question. But oh, there's a body slam in the center of the ring delivered from the Reaper. Well, I think as long as Matt Connor is in this on his two feet, this grudge will definitely try to be settled to the best of Kid Billy's. As we saw that drop and knee going right across the jaw region of Tony Johnson. And Matt Connor wants him to pay. Every decision that he has made, when Matt Connor came to his side, Tony Johnson was nowhere to be found. He just decided to join the main event. So, so therefore, I mean, what, what, do you, what do you expect we're going to see of this duration of this match between these competitors? I think you have to factor in the main event. Being in the corner there as Reaper goes down into the turnbuckle. The main event just signed Tony Johnson. And they're going to look to uh, protect their, their new investment here, their new player and ensure that he gets the win tonight. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind, ladies and gentlemen. The main event is here in attendance, and Tony Johnson delivers a shot there to the knee of Reaper. And he is going to try to get the win on his own, but like I said, the main event will step in if they feel they have to, so keep an eye out for that. Reaper knows it, but how much can he do here as Tony Johnson goes after that leg and chops him down here, delivering both those knees. Again, just wearing down that leg of the Reaper. You know what, like Tony Johnson or not, 
He is a man that knows exactly what he wants to do as he's, cap as he's capitalizing on this injured part of him. He understands what I'm doing. Now, what I'm seeing here is there's a height difference between Matt Connor and Tony Johnson. So one of the things that you're trained is go for the weakest points and get them on your level. That's exactly what Tony Johnson is doing right here as he's attacking his leg. Just twisting that leg here. I mean, when, when you when you deal with that when you, when you deal with that chain, I mean, you 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 probably done something we've all done just with the normal history. When you're walking and say you step on black ice and you tweak your leg, I mean, if you get any pressure on your knee, it's it's an agonizing pressure. That's right. That we were able to shove it up here. On. But that leg's not the same. That leg's not the same. Oh. Not the same, and neither is the face after connecting the legs. Tripped up here, and you see him writhing in pain. The main event, smiling the head as their, uh, as their fellow team member, uh, Tony Johnson, right now, was taking advantage. A little bit earlier, Tony Johnson actually asked the fans, why are they clapping? Now, notice the saying that. Do you, do you feel that we're seeing a different Tony Johnson? I was just going to ask you. They've had an entire month to game plan for this very match. And you see that in effect. Right here and now. Tony Johnson, knife edge chop delivered there, returning that punishment from earlier. Reaper, back on the attacker. You see him staggering forward there. Even though he's pushing the attack, he is limping. But, but you see that, you know, he's trying to get back on top. However, that leg is going to play a little bit of a uh, little bit of an issue within the duration of this match. For oh, he, he, he gives out I on him there. I just talked about that. Oh, there's a kick. I think it's, I think it's taking his toll. You see the strategy. Hook of the leg. One. And a kick out at one. You see the strategy we talked about. The main event, no doubt. Game planning with Tony Johnson. He's more prepared. A little bit more technique on display here. And keep in mind, these two have been on the same team over the last couple of events, so they know each other that way. Absolutely. Oh, and look at this maneuver right here. Just pulling up on that leg. And just, again... Torturing the knee, torturing the reaper. As Matt Connor tries to battle back. Matt Connor is able to actually uh, fight out, but notice see that leg is still not the same. Main event's looking ball like a bunch of animals right now, just wondering what's going on. A little bit upset by what's going on right here, Matt Connor. I mean, this has been a back and forth match between both of these stars here. Oh, there you see Gibbs out there as he's looked in. To the corner. <laughs> Look at the mockery there. <laughs> you know, Iceman used to not be as cocky as he is now, and all it took was that little bit of time right there. Hey, Red, when you sign to the Patriots or the Cowboys, you get a little bit of extra swagger in your step. Oh, I agree. I That's know, a different I type it. of swagger right there as that elbow is delivered to the jaw and off the top rope goes Matt Connor, but he paid for it there. That leg landed. You know, the knee's jarred there, so it doesn't matter whether you're walking or diving from the top rope. It's going to hurt every time you land on it. Here comes the reason out of the kick. corner. Oh, the Iceman reversing there. In control this one for the moment. There's the arms wrapped around the waist. Back Welcome corner. to your corner roll. Back here, here's the Iceman going... Wait a second, look at that, look at that, despite the leg, that's very impressive. Matt Connor was able to just time it just a split second earlier and counter right off of Battling that spring through the board pain kick. here, can the Iceman hold on, here comes the main event. I said to watch out for him. And rather than have the Iceman, their new teammate lose, they are going to get him disqualified here. I mean, I think it's a very smart decision if you ask me. Oh, oh, it's a smart it's three decision. Three against one here. Three against one. Call it whatever you want. Call it like it is. It's three against one. Chiefs, dastardly. And the Reaper wins, but he is just getting demolished here. Six minutes, 51 seconds. Winner of this match, be the disqualification. For outside interference, the Reaper, Matt Conard. Hey, this I is mean, just brutal. I mean, Matt yeah. Conard got the win, but I don't think he wanted to win this way. And a statement being made here oh as the main gosh. event. Lands the triple power bomb on the Reaper. Hey, you said.